。然后 ，the first one will be hearing about WebKit GTK， and the second will be about a keyboard library， e d k b o a r d and the third one， 诶 ，for 李世远 will be talk about the Debian policy。And okay, then we welcome the to our first speaker, Sam Lopez. Sam Lopez is working in in Galia, in Galia, and he's also very experienced in he's also very experienced in GTK and in known development. And today his topic is about Web GT,、uh, WebKit and GTK, a、uh, joint implementation of both. Right? Okay, let's welcome. Okay. Uh, so I'm Sean Lopez, as he said.、Uh, I've been working on GNOME for about six years now, or or so. I'm a foundation member. I also work on the WebKit project, where I'm a reviewer. I've I have been involved since 2007, and I maintain the GTK port of WebKit. And I work for Igalia, which is a Spanish company, free software company. So first of all, I want to talk about what this talk is not about.、Uh, I'm not going to talk about、uh, how web applications and the difference between web applications and desktop applications and how they are changing the way people see applications. So I'm not going to talk about any of this. I'm also not going to talk about the cloud or how to put data in the in the, in the internet and how to make the desktop applications interact with that. I'm just going to focus on one thing, which is、uh, that the web as an application development platform is is kind of winning against the desktop uh, world. Uh, and wh why will be the the reasons for this?、Uh, one of them is that it's everywhere. You if you write a web application, you can. Kind of assume that more or less everyone has a web browser and can use the application you write.、Uh, so I, by writing web apps instead of desktop apps, and just targeting one desktop like Windows or Mac or, or some Linux desktop, you can really reach lots of more people.、Uh, yesterday I was looking for some kind of data, and I saw this that says that there's close to two billion, yeah, cl close to two billion users. For of the internet with with web access and internet access, I don't know if this is more or less accurate, but I don't know since it was in the internet, I will just assume it's true.、Uh, also, another thing that web application、uh, web development has over desktop applications is that it's really easy to get started. You basically just need a text editor and a web browser, and you can just write something and make it appear on the on the web. And if this continues for a long time, and the web really keeps、uh, catching up on, with the desktop and technologies, and people keep writing just web applications, it might just happen very soon that the web will become the dominant platform in the future for application development,、uh, instead of GNOME or anything else.、Uh, and some of you in the audience might say, "Well, you know, this is not really very different than now. GNOME is not really in any way the dominant." Uh, the platform for application development, and you're right. So 
what we can do, we can try to do is something I did this time uh, instead of you know trying to keep uh, fighting with Windows or Mac in pushing our desktop application development frameworks. Maybe you can try to catch up with the web and integrate the web into our web development applications. So, what will be your original plan to do this? Uh, I think has two steps. The first step we started a few years ago in Boris WebKit which if you were in the talk that Holger did just now, he gave a real reasonable introduction to what, what work it is, but if you don't, were not there, just very briefly, it's a, it's a portable web engine that uh, powers some of the most popular browsers nowadays, like Chromium and Safari. Uh, it's about two million lines of C++ code, uh, and it's an architecture in a way that allows it to be native in very different uh, platforms. So what we wanted to do was to integrate WebKit into the GNOME platform. And for this, we started WebKit GTK, which is a part of WebKit that it's uh, written using the underlying uh, libraries for the, web, uh, for the GNOME platform. So for instance, for graphics development, we use Kyra, which is our graphics library. For network, we use Soup. For accessibility, we use ATK. For font rendering, we use Pango, and so on. The list continues. So we use the platform. Uh, we expose uh, native GTK uh, APIs for our, all, all the functionality in WebKit GTK. So if you are writing GTK applications and you would want to use WebKit, we give you a series of uh, widgets and APIs that you can use that are feel are geoted based and are completely native uh, for the platform. The main one is a one called WebKit Web View, which is uh, the, the basic uh, the basic viewer for the web content that you can embed in your application to show. Uh, any kind of web-related content. Uh, since we started this, uh, the, the WebKit GTK project has received a uh, big adoption. It's used in many browsers, including uh, Epiphany, which is the official GNOME browser, but it's also used in instant messaging clients like Empathy uh, to do uh, theming. So what they do is they, they get in Mac OS X, the, the I'm, I'm writing in Mac OS X has uh, theme files that are actually just HTML and CSS, so what they did is implement the support for those files so you can show different kinds of layouts for your conversations and they are compatible with the Mac OS X application. It's using email clients to render HTML emails. It's, using, it's used to display the help in the GNOME desktop and so on. The problem with this is uh, we, were, we were missing a really important feature in the WebKit GTK platform which was there was no easy way to access and modify the web content. We were not really giving the appropriate uh, APIs to do, the, to do so. So I, just, I will just show you a few examples of the kind of things we had to do in the past. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so uh, as you can see here in March, of 2009, I wanted to implement a translucent link message uh, status bar. What this is, is basically just uh, like in Chrome browser, if you if you have used it, when you hover over a link, uh, actually, I think I can show you an example. When you hover over a link, it will show this gray rectangle on the bottom, and when you hover away, it goes away. So I wanted to do something similar in, uh, in Epiphany. So basically what you have to do, uh, the, the solution I devised was to just inject some HTML code in the page that will show this rectangle. But as I said, there was really no convenient API to do so. So basically, I had to write this huge string of JavaScript code. And you can, as you can see here, I, I put some fix me saying get rid of this stuff as soon as possible. So it's basically this huge chunk that you write there and then you just use a function which is called execute script. So you get the view and you tell it, uh, just get this string of JavaScript and execute it in your context. And well, it sort of works, but uh, it has a very big problem that it's very difficult to debug. So, you know, if you have some, if you made some mistake in this, in this string, it's basically pretty complex to figure out what's going wrong. It's also very painful to write this and blah, blah. So, you know, people were not really using this a lot. There was another way of doing this, uh, which was 
using the JavaScript core API. So uh, if you want uh, to access the web content, another thing you can do is uh, use the JavaScript core APIs, which are a C-based API for the JavaScript library that WebKit has. So for example, if you want to uh, get the links in a, in a web page, you just have to create a string using the, this, these APIs of JavaScript core. Uh, and make a, a JavaScript value out of it, call it a function, uh, blah, 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 do sorts of things. I mean, just to do uh, a very simple thing, it takes a lot of time, and you have to write very verbose code, which is not uh, convenient to write. And this, uh, in this example, uh, some uh, GNOME developer uh, moved this, uh, this implementation for, from using JavaScript code to using the new DOM APIs, and as you can see, he was able to do exactly the same thing uh, using about 100 lines less of code. So, you know, that's a pretty impressive uh, way of explaining the difference between the two kinds of APIs. So basically, until very recently, we were in this stage where we just had these two, two ways of accessing and uh, changing the web content uh, in a web view uh, until, um, so well, uh, uh, in this, in the, both these examples, we are using the DOM APIs, which is basically the, the way uh, you have to use and modify the, the, the content in a web page. Um, in both of those, we are using JavaScript in, way, in one way or another. In one, we are writing JavaScript directly in a string. In the other, we are using some APIs. And actually, using JavaScript is the way most people know how to access uh, the content in a web page or how to make them dynamic. So, I mean, this is one example that might be familiar to most of you, just get the element in one page which has an idea of foo and just set a color of red for it. Uh, but actually, if you, if you read the spec, the DOM says that uh, it's designed to be used with any programming language in order to provide a precise language independent specification to the DOM interfaces. We have chosen to define the specification in OMG IDL, which uh, this is not what it seems to be. Uh, it just uh, means Object Management Group Interface Definition Language, which is a sort of a standard way of defining what an API looks like. So this is a, a one real example of WebKit, is the ideal definition of document. And I mean, the details are not very important, but it tells you it's an interface, it's super classes node, there's attributes, it has functions which have return values, parameters, it can have annotations that WebKit can use for different purposes. So uh, since you have this, and WebKit is a structure in a way that allows you to write code that knowing the names and the types of these functions, you can actually use the underlying implementation of the DOM in WebKit. You, it, you can fairly easily write an implementation that uses the object and C to access the DOM in the WebKit. So now I'm going to show you one example. Uh, I just wanted to ask how many of you are familiar with GObject and GTK programming? Uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, GObject and GTK programming? Okay, not many of you. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so maybe I can do it, I don't know, from scratch or, or something. So I will try to, to go slowly and explain everything I'm doing. Uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, to begin with, uh, we have to include uh, the WebKit headers, and then you are just going to write a simple GTK program. So we can do. First of all, we are going to create a window where we will show just everything we have. We have to initialize ETK, it's just there's some magical things we don't really care too much about. And in the end, we just run the main loop. The main loop is the thing that it keeps waiting for the user input and will make the program react to what we do. So we create a new window. It's a top-level window. And we show it. 